Okay, so in the following question, Z1 is the complex number 3 plus 4, right? Write down the real part of Z1. Well, part A, the real part of Z1 is 3. So R E Z1 equals 3. Part B, write down the imaginary part of Z1. Well, the imaginary part of Z1 is 4. John thinks the image, uh, the imaginary is Z1. John thinks I am Z1 is an imaginary number. Do you think I am Z1? Mary thinks the image of Z1 is a real number. Who is correct? Justify your answer. Okay. Well, imagine, sorry, John thinks the imaginary number Z1 is an imaginary number. Mary thinks uh, the imaginary part of Z1 is a real number. Well, it's 4. And four is a real number. Remember, you're counting the number that comes in front of the front of the eye, not the eye itself. So I am Z one is four. Okay, who is correct? Uh, Mary is correct. And just to find our answer, what we're going to have is I am Z one equals four. Four is a real number. Okay. Z two is a complex number. Where Z two equals I am Z one. Plot Z two on the argon diagram. So. What we're going to have is the argon diagram over here and set 2 is a complex number where it equals I am Z1 so set 2 basically equals 4 okay so this means that it's going to be the point uh, 4 plus 0 I which is the point 4 0 okay that's question 8 done now on to question 10. Six complex numbers set 1, set 2, set 3, set 4, set 5, set 6 are shown on the argon diagram where the same scale is used on both axes. They satisfy the following conditions. Set 2 equals 2z1. Two okay? So what we're looking for in this case is that if we had a real if we had a complex number z1, so for instance I had a complex number z1, which looks like this what's going to happen is when you multiply by minus two it's going to double in length okay so we had a complex number let's say z equals uh, three plus i as an example three up one across okay and that was there now imagine we multiply this by minus two so multiply all of this by minus two and what we'll get is minus six plus two i so basically it doubles in length and goes into the opposite quadrant okay so doubles in length and goes into the opposite quadrant so give me one look at this again oh it's minus 2i sorry 6 minus 2i so doubles in length and goes in the opposite quadrant down here so that's what we're looking for something that's double in length and in the opposite quadrant so you might look at this one here and this one here we can see it's doubling length this time around so I recommend that this one here will be uh, this is Z2 and this one is Z1 now let's find out the real part of Z3 equals the real part of Z2 this means they have the same X value okay so this means that Z3 has the same real value as Z2 so I call this one Z3 then because they're at the same they're at the same uh, X value they have the same real value okay so that's why I call that one Z3 now the, the imaginary part of Z4 equals the imaginary part of Z2 this basically means they have the same Y value so this here is going to be Z4 okay and then we have Z5 equals Z2 plus Z4 Z2 plus Z4 is going to be Imagine uh, Z2 plus Z4 is going to be, they have the same height as each other. So when you add both complex numbers together, they should be double in height. So this will make this one Z5. And finally, Z6 equals the imaginary part of Z4. So the imaginary part of Z4 is this height here. And imagine if we were to turn this line around. And then put it over here we can see it's the same length so this means that this part here is going to be a uh, set six okay number 12 three complex numbers said set squared and set cubed are shown on the argon diagram 
or the same scales used on both axes. They satisfy the following conditions. The modulus of Z is greater than 1. One of them lies on the real axis. Identify each number on the Aragon diagram. Now remember, if the modulus is bigger than 1, what happens is, when the modulus is uh, bigger than 1, what we have is it should it will spiral outwards. So remember, it should spiral outwards. So the original Z is, is the closest one to the origin, and then it starts to uh, starts to spiral outwards. And then we have a uh, Z squared, and then we'll get bigger again for Z cubed. So analyzing these uh, the distance back to the origin. What we'll see is that this one here, this one here, and this one here. We can see that this one said one because it's the nearest to the origin, or and then said squared is the second closest, and then said cubed is the furthest away. Okay, so that's what we can find out there. Now. What I'm asking for next is identify each, uh, find t to 1 the argument of z and find the argument of z squared and t to 3 the argument of z cubed. Okay, so we have to do is you have to find out the angle of each one. Okay. So what they're going to be is an even displacement from each other. Okay. So what we're going to see is that each time it goes around, it makes an even angle with each other. Okay. So, but this one is going to be 120 degrees. This one here is going to be 240 degrees. And uh, finally, set three is going to be zero degrees. Okay. So this one is 120. This one here is 240, and this one here. Is zero degrees because it's back where it started from. If the modulus of z equals two, express z, z squared and z cubed in the form a plus bi. Okay, so r cos theta plus i sine theta is the polar form. We know the modulus or the r value is two. We know that Z is going to be 2 cos 120 plus I sine 120. Okay, and um, what that should give us is cos 2 cos 120. Uh, it's in radian mode, so shift step up, go to degrees, and we get there is minus 1. We're going to be minus 1 uh, plus root 3i. Now, what we've got to do next is we've got to find out what z squared is. z squared is going to be uh, 2 cos 120 plus i sine 120 squared. So, what we're going to do is multiply the angle by 2 and multiply the angles by 2 and then square the modulus. So, we're going to get 4 cos 240 plus i sine 240. Now that's using the Myers theorem. So what we get next is 4 cos 240. And so 4 cos 240 is minus 2. And then uh, 4 sine 240. It's going to be minus 2 root 3i. So minus 2 minus uh, 2 root 3i. And then finally z cubed is going to be 2 cubed or 2 basically cos 120 plus i sine 120 to the power 3. And what we're going to get this time is 2 to the power 3 which is 8. Multiply 3 by both angles and we're going to get cos 360 plus i sine 360 
and what we should get is those A plus zero I. Okay, finally, if Z4 equals KZ, find the value of K. Well, we'll just find out what Z4 is for a start. Z4 equals uh, 2 sine, so 2 2 cos 180 plus i sine, oh, sorry, 120. That's what z is. 120 plus i sine 120 to the power of 4. Remember, this is what we said z was. Okay, and multiplying by 4, we're going to get 2 to the power of 4. That equals 16. And we're going to get cos, uh, cos 480 plus i sine 480. Now, please remember, 480. It's the same thing. If you take away 360, it's the same thing as 120. Because remember, it repeats itself over and over again. So what we're going to get is the same thing as uh, cos 120, I sine 120. So we know that this k value is equal to this. This is basically kz. All this here is once again the z value, and then it's 16 on the outside. So Z4 equals 16, Z, K therefore equals 16. Okay, so that's 8, 10 and 12 done there.